Hello. How's everyone doing? Um, today I want to talk about um, I don't know. I'm feeling tired today. I feel tired and I feel foggy and I feel like I'm doubting myself too much. <laughs> I recorded an episode yesterday and I liked it a lot, but then I didn't put it up because I realized that um, I referenced my friends. I said I have two friends, but really I have three. <laughs> and I felt bad for leaving her out, so I don't want to post it. But I can't re recreate it. And I kind of just got into that hypercritical mindset, you know? And now I feel just blocked completely. And there's so much that I've been through in the last, like, six weeks that I could talk about. There's so much I could talk about, but I just don't. I'm so foggy. And I kind of feel like it's the energy. Like, I feel like this is the energy right now. I know we're getting a lot of, um, I think we're in a geomagnetic storm right now. I don't know what that means exactly, but I feel a lot of pressure in my eyes. <laughs> um, so maybe I'm going to talk about how the inner critics kind of get in your way sometimes, like they block you. Um, I, I had the image this morning of like, um, well, first of all, there there was a point in my journey where I, I, I decided that if I ever catch myself lying to myself, like, we just knock that off. We just do not do that anymore. I'm not going to lie to myself anymore. So if I realize something, then I change it. But... Um, I feel like I'm holding myself back in a big way um, because there's a part of me that feels like what I have to say is not important and it doesn't really help anybody and like nobody's listening. Um, and then there's, and but then there's people that I work with that are like, thank you so much <laughs> for the work that you do. It really impacted my life and they tell me these beautiful stories and, and so then I'm like, well, <laughs> I must be lying to myself. But then I had this image this morning of like, you know, I've been kind of thinking like, what, what, what am I being called to do? I, I'm really not sure. And I do feel like I'm being called to offer more pointed teachings like workshops. Um, and then also offering, still offering one-on-one -on -one services um, for people. But like there's something about just recording content that feels like it's not enough in my, in my mind. And even when I record content, feeling like it's, you know, not um, good enough. And, and, I, and I don't know if that's like a program of, of like um, comparison, you know, where you compare yourself to other people. I don't know if that's what that is because, because I know that there's a lot of teachers out there that I see um, that are um, seemingly successful. Um, but then I also recognize that a lot of them are manipulative and toxic and, and actually like harvesting energy from <laughs> the people that they say that they're trying to help. Um, and so then my spirit is telling me like, you know, the whole point is, you know, the ego is like, you have nothing to show for this. You have nothing to show for why anyone would want to take this path. <laughs> you don't have, you know, millions of dollars. You don't have... Um, you know, I guess the material things, the mind really wants material things. And, but, um, 
But my spirit is like, that's kind of the whole point. <laughs> you're, you're meant to be teaching people that it's not the material things that are going to change the way that you feel. And that it's possible to change the way you feel without those material things. Um, and then the ego is like, but is that enough? Like, do people want that? Because it seems like they don't. And the spirit's like, it doesn't matter. That's what you're supposed to be teaching. <laughs> um, so this morning I got the image. I don't know if anybody's a Seinfeld fan, but I got the image in my mind of George Costanza. I think he was at a nursing home or something and the fire alarm got pulled and he shoved an old woman out of the way. And my spirit was just like, you got to get out of your own way. Like, go get out of your own way. And so I guess that's what I'm talking about today is how to get out of your own way. Um, or something. <laughs> but also, like, recently, um, I moved. And, you know, I have the intention in my life that everything always works out for me. Um, and, and I want to add a little asterisk at the end of that. <laughs> um, everything does always work out for me, but it doesn't always go the way that I want it to. Um, there, but it always goes the way I need it to. <laughs> it sometimes it, um, sometimes it goes the opposite of what I expected. And, and there's a lesson in that too, like releasing the attachment to the outcome. And all of these things I know, but all of these things, it's like a, a nut under the cup, you know, the magic trip. <laughs> like, don't forget about being present. Don't forget about releasing attachment. Don't forget about this. Don't forget about this. Or it'll be like a life showing you, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about, I, I actually was attached to that outcome. I really was actually hoping for that. And it didn't work out. And I don't understand why. And so then I got upset and I got de like disappointed and depressed almost. Like I almost felt like, um, like I had, like the universe let me down and like I had done something wrong. But there was this like moment of foreshadowing. I hope people can relate to what I'm saying because um, I'm really not sure how else to tell you other than share my experiences. Um, so that was the ego again, <laughs> criticizing and like questioning, what are you doing? This isn't, this is like so unusual for you to be just like rambling this way. Anyway, um, so I went to, um, I went to LA in February. I got to speak at the Conscious Life Expo and that was so cool. What a cool experience that was. I really liked it. I really had a great time. And I was able to really see just how many different people there are out there in the spiritual world. Um, and there's a lot of toxic <laughs> spirituality happening. But then there's also a lot of people that are authentic. And, and it was beautiful to see the contrast. But, um, but, but then when I was coming home, um, <laughs> when I was coming home, um, I had to be, I think I had, oh, I had scheduled an appointment to check in at TSA at like 6.30 in the morning. And so, and I was sharing a room with one of my, my dear friends and, and of course we stayed up late talking. And so I was, it was an early morning for me and I was kind of sluggish and running around, um, at the last minute. And I called the desk, the front desk and asked, um, when the shuttle came and she was like, well, you should probably be down here about 30 minutes before you want to get to the airport. And, um, it was already like <laughs> 10 after six at that point. So, um, it was, I already knew 
we're going to have to go with the flow today and trust that everything's working out for us. <laughs> so um, I got to the air. Well, I got down to the lobby and the shuttle was just finishing loading like they were just loading up so I ran for it and I got the back row there was nobody in the back row but both sides of the shuttle were packed put my bag on got the back row and I'm like yay made it everything's working out for me I knew it and um we're I don't know if anybody's traveled through the LAX airport it is a big airport and there are lots of stops, lots of terminals, obviously, um, for different airlines. And my terminal was like seven, I think. And so I had to watch all these other people get off. And I was literally the last one. And as I was watching just everybody, I was just people watch, observing people. Um, there was this couple and she was an older lady and she... Um, accused the driver of giving her bag to somebody else at one point and the husband went up to check and he was like no they're all here and the driver said no they're all here and um and I just observed it and was like oh interesting you know that she is so concerned about that because I know where your focus goes is where the energy is going to flow. And so I'm, I'm always paying attention to what other people, I mean, if, if I have time, if I'm not involved in my own thing, which I wasn't. Um, I just observe people and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like if you're really super focused about staying healthy and not getting sick, chances are you're, you're going to get sick. <laughs> like, it depends on how you're focused. So anyway, I was watching that and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm not concerned at all at this point. I'm watching all these people leave, you know, and then that couple got off and I saw, <laughs> I saw them get off and I saw what looked like my bag go out the door. And I thought, no, <laughs> no, that's not the case. Um, <laughs> so we start driving and now everybody's off the bus. I think there was one person after that and then everybody was off the bus. And then my stop was coming up next and so I started to move up to the front. And I'm looking and I'm like there's no more bags there. Like they did. She gave she gave my bag away. <laughs> and so I'm like, "Hmm." I said to her, because I think at that point I had gotten her name. We'd already started talking. Her name was Destiny. <laughs> um, and I said, Destiny, where's my bag? And she goes, what? Where is your bag? And I'm like, I think you gave it away, <laughs> I think you gave it away to that couple. And and she goes, why didn't you say anything? And I said, oh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to accuse you. I, I didn't, I trusted you. I trusted the process. <laughs> she goes, you should have. And I was like, okay, well, here we are. We're here now. What are we going to do? And um, so we had to go all the way around the airport. And the whole time she's saying things to me that are not positive and not encouraging and feel very discouraging. And I don't know how many of you actually, um, you know, how you fly, how you travel, that says a lot about you as a person. I usually go with the flow, but in this instance, I was like feeling the panic of like, those are my things. Somebody's going to have my things and, and I'm not getting my things back and the fear and everything. And so we, she goes, um, I think that was an international port that I dropped them off to. She said, they're flying out of the country. <laughs> Whoa, okay. And she was like, I don't know, girl, maybe they'll call, maybe they'll call the hotel. I don't know. It doesn't look good. She's calling on the radio to other drivers to see if they see the bag. And it takes us about 15 or 20 minutes to get all the way around the airport. And at one point, she did hear from another driver, and he said, there is a bag on the sidewalk. And she goes, we better get there before security sees it, because then they will shut down the airport. 
<laughs> so <laughs> we keep driving and I'm thinking the whole time it's going to be there. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. And of course, I've missed my appointment with security. So I've missed that appointment <laughs> that's done. Um, now I'm not sure I'm going to make the flight. <laughs> so I get off, I we get to the spot where they've they've spotted the bag and she stops in the middle of the road. She didn't even pull over to the curb because there was so much traffic and she goes, Go girl, get it. <laughs> so I got off and I ran out and I had to run around a bus and I got it. I found it. I grabbed it, thank God. Got back on the <laughs> on the tram. And throughout this time, she and I are talking and We're having a conversation about trusting in God, trusting that all's going to be fine. This is all in divine timing. This is divinely aligned. Like we are like really amping up the energy that everything is working out in our favor. Like this is happening for a reason. And then she starts to talk to me about how her, her religious beliefs have started to change. And she's looking, I mean, like we had this divine conversation during this process which was beautiful. And we became friends <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> and um, anyway, so um, she takes me to my gate, lets me off and says, this is how you get there. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go to check my bag because I think at the last minute they allowed me to check my bag. Uh, I was going to carry it on. Um, but they said that they wanted us to check our bags and it would be free. And so I did that anyway. And so I checked my bag. I, and as soon as I gave it away to the attendant, I was like, something doesn't feel right. And I realized (laughs) that I'd left my carry on on the shuttle. (laughs) I had a backpack with me and my purse and a carry on bag. And I left my backpack on the shuttle. And she was gone. So then (laughs) I thought, oh, shoot. (laughs) Like, that one has my journal in it. (laughs) That one has, like, the personal stuff. Because I don't put personal stuff in my my, uh, check-on bags. I put it in my carry-on bag because I keep that stuff with me. Well, it's gone. And um, (laughs) so then I had to call. (laughs) I had to call the hotel. I'm standing out on the curb, calling the hotel. I'm looking at all the shuttles going by, hoping that I see her again. uh, Just trying to trust. Everything's working out for me. It's going to be okay. There's a plan. (laughs) And I got through to the hotel and they say, oh, she just went on her lunch break. (laughs) So now they're going to try to get her and have her come back another, you know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. I eventually see her come around and she opens the door and I was like, Destiny, God does not want us to end this conversation. (laughs) She's like, you know, that's right. (laughs) And I get in there and of course I find it. It's right there where I left it, right between the seat and the divider for the driver. And I'm like, good heavens. So I get the bag. Now it's a question of, am I going to make the flight? I still have to go through security. I get to security. I tell them that I had an appointment (laughs) about 45 minutes ago. (laughs) Maybe it was even longer than that. And I pull up the verification that I had an appointment and they let me through anyway. So the whole time I'm just trying to remain calm and I want I want to bring your attention to that. Like when things are seemingly out of your control, the only thing you can do is do the best that you can to remain calm because it's going to go the way it's going to go. And you just got to kind of hang on sometimes. There's not panicking and being worried or thinking of the worst case scenarios, um, leaning into those is not going to do anything positive for the situation. All you can do is kind of just be like, well, I guess this is, (laughs) this is what I'm doing now. So I get to, I, I get through security. I'm running to the gate and it's in the, our final boarding. And it was probably, so we get, I got on the plane 
And then it got delayed. Got on the plane and it got delayed. So we sat there for an hour and um, they, they'd they made a couple of comments, like the, the flight attendant said something like, well, well, first of all, it was delayed an hour, which means that the next flight, because I had a connecting flight out of San Francisco to get back home again, and um, and that only had an hour layover. So now I don't know if I'm going to make that flight. So it was constantly just exchanging the present moment of panic for the next present moment of panic. And, and it was kind of just a cycle that I was chasing. And I've not even had any water or coffee at this point in my life <laughs> this morning. And so um, I so I didn't know if I was going to make my connecting flight. So I asked the flight attendant and they said, um, they said, with all that's going on, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're delayed too. And I thought, with all that's going on, like, is there some kind of, I don't watch news. Is there some kind of like national thing happening, um, emergency or something that I don't know of? And um, and so I kind of let it go. And then we finally get taken off. And, um, and, and then when we're about to get to San Francisco, I asked if there was any way they could, I, I said, you know, I don't know if they're going to hold the connecting flight, but we're going to land after it is supposed to take off. And he said, well, with everything that's going on, I don't, I'm sure they're going to hold it for you, but we'll make an announcement and make sure everybody stays seated so that the people with connectings can take off. And I'm like, okay. And I go, what do you mean with all that's going on? What are we talking about? What's happening? And he goes, it's the Super Bowl. <laughs> Oh, 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 you mean the one where the San Francisco 49ers are playing? And he said, yeah, everybody called out sick (laughs) to watch the game. Everybody, everybody in LA and San Francisco. So, so. We got to San Francisco. They asked everybody to stay seated except for the people with connecting flights. That didn't happen. <laughs> and so, um, again, just like trusting the process. Like, I, this is where, we are, where we're at. Like, I don't know what else to do but trust. It's all I can do. And so, um, <laughs> so we uh, land wait and wait and wait and finally get off and then I'm rushing and it's on the other side of the terminal of course and San Francisco is not a small airport in my opinion either and so I'm walking on all of the moving sidewalks as fast as I can and trying to get there and um and then I get a text message and it says um take a deep breath we're holding the plane for you and I was like well that's so nice and I was like okay so I can just like calm down a little bit and I kind of just slowed my pace just a little bit and I rounded the corner I could see that I could see the gate and then I heard my name Stephanie's on wall final call <laughs> so obviously that text had been a little delayed in getting to me and so I'm like screaming hollering waving my hand here I am (laughs) I'm running to the gate and I make it on the plane we take off and um and then we ended up landing in my town 40 minutes before the original scheduled land so we got there early after all of that (laughs) after all of that we got there early. Like for me, that whole journey was like, first of all, it felt like a portal. Like I'd gone through some kind of time warp or something. I was exhausted after that. Um, I finally got my coffee when I got home. (laughs) And, um, and for me, the clarity came through that like, like really you have to trust the process and of course at that point in my life when when I was coming back from LA I did not know where I was going to be moving um I didn't know how that was all going to come together I had an idea of what I wanted 
what I thought that I was going to be doing, but I didn't, I didn't know where or how or when or any of that. I just knew that I was moving out of the current place at the end of February. And so for me, that my higher self was really reminding me that like, no matter what happens, just trust that it's all for your benefit and you're not going to be left behind. You're actually going to be ahead of schedule. <laughs> um, at the end of February, it was a whirlwind, very similar to that. At the very last minute, I discovered where I would be moving um, that path became very clear within a matter of 24 hours, and it was not what I thought it was going to be. And I got really disappointed, and I had a lot of really hard emotions about that. But I had to accept that the idea that I had in my mind is not for the highest good at this time. And I have to trust the process. And it's incredibly difficult to do when your ego thinks it knows the right path. You know, we, we get in our own ways. And so that idea this morning of George Costanza <laughs> pushing old ladies out of the way so that he can get out first, like get out of your own way, Stephanie, just trust what's happening and go with the flow. And I'm probably going to end up in a better position than I, if I would have gotten what I thought I wanted. And the whole point, the whole reason for this journey in the very beginning was that the ego leads me to places where there's more to learn, more lessons, more um, difficult situations that I have to find the meaning in. And the higher self is leading me towards what my soul intended. Like it, it's leading me more towards... Um, what I deserve now that I have um, healed so much. What I'm aligned to now that I've healed so much. We all deserve everything. I mean, deserving is not the question. You are here on purpose. And if you can surrender and trust the flow of your life and allow and accept it, even if it doesn't seem like it's what you want it to be, you can a lot of times um, jump ahead of the line and get there early. So, um, yeah, that's what I got for you today. I hope that resonates for some of you. And, um, yeah, life is limitless with the higher self-connection. <laughs> 